Katie from Ventures and welcome back to Venture Game Show Geek. Today I plan to dive into some of the most iconic game shows of all time, what I like to call the Broadsword Television Universe. Broadsword was a production company masterminded by Tim Child, who can rightfully be considered a creative genius for his input in shaping adventure game shows as we know them today. Broadsword had five programmes, all of which were groundbreaking and pushed the limits of what was technologically possible at the time. But, times change, technology changes, can those shows hold up to today's scrutiny? And do they deserve another lease of life? This is where I come in. I'm going to go through, show by show, and critique them with a modern teenager's lens. So prepare to join me as I phase across time once more to see how these shows shape up. Nightmare. 1987, 35 years ago. What can I say about Nightmare that hasn't already been said hundreds of times already by hundreds of people? It's brilliant, groundbreaking, glorious, and well deserves its place in the television halls of fame. I know it lives on in every show that's claimed to take inspiration from it, but I'd love to see a proper reboot of it just as it was. Well, maybe with a little less national stereotyping and period typical racism? You could probably dial down the heavily Christian undertones as well, but other than that, there's a reason why it defines so many people's childhoods, and it's a show that will forever be loved. Virtually impossible. 1994, 28 years ago. It was meant to be Nightmare's, I hesitate to say, replacement, successor? Yeah, that works. It was meant to be Nightmare's successor, but more VR-based and also sci-fi. And then neither of them were brought back. I've only watched one episode, because I can only find one episode, and I consider it... okay-ish? I'll elaborate. I'll start with the characters. I quite like the Ice Woman as a villain. She's supposed to be a capitalism metaphor, right? And she works even better nowadays as a metaphor for how most of the child-oriented spaces are being erased from the internet, driving children onto social media prematurely, while the same thing is being done to adult spaces, creating a both hostile and over-sanitised internet environment that caters to no one except advertisers designed purely to sell us stuff. Sorry, I've been doing some reading on the topic recently, but I love how she comes across regardless. But, my, oh my, who thought putting a human nose on a fish was a good and rational idea? Codsby is an abomination. The games featured seem to be a mixed bag as well. Games like Virtual Dodgems and the flying combat game featured in the opening credits are interesting and somewhat exciting. Games like Tetris Towers and Castle Ghastly are boring and confusing. Overall, it's held back by the technology of its time, the VR wasn't good enough, nor was the computer system, and despite there being four games an episode, I really didn't feel like there was much gameplay at all. Would I bring it back today? Maybe the graphics and game system would be infinitely better in today's times. Not perfect, but definitely better. But I'd also want to revamp all the games, give them clearer objectives, and I'd ditch Codsby straight away. To be honest, the only thing I really like and would keep exactly the same is the Ice Woman, so maybe it isn't worth rebooting. But it will always be remembered, even if it's just as Nightmare's problem little sibling, Cyberzone. 1993, 29 years ago. It's quite similar to Virtually Impossible format-wise, except there are two teams playing against each other, and everyone is an adult. But by all things good and true, the graphics make me want to rip out my eyes and burn them in dra Dragonfire. I'm sorry if that's my privilege, I was born in a year with a two in front talking, but it's the truth. And that's not the only problem. There isn't enough gameplay, and the challenges that occur in the limited time are dismal. And also, I cannot state this enough, I hate the Borgs, or more accurately, their name. Borgs is a shortening of Cyborgs. And the avatars are not Cyborgs! A Cyborg is both mechanical and organic. Literally a cybernetic organism. Caleb! Caleb from Mission 2110 is an excellent example of a Cyborg. Not these! And to make things worse, they're neither cybernetic nor organic, they're virtual, digital, and that really annoys me. <laughs> I need some good points. Yes, Craig Charles, his presenting is literally carrying the whole show. 
along with the brilliant aesthetic created by the music and set designs, they actually managed to trick me into enjoying it. Yes, you heard me. I actually enjoy watching this, despite my problems. I, I just love the energy. <laughs> but honestly, I don't think it needs a reboot. Everything it aimed for has since been achieved by Bamzuki Street Wars. And no, I'm not going to take that back because I am not wrong. I'm trying to put off talking about the satellite game, so I'm going to use this as an opportunity to bring up some of Broadsword's creations that never made it to broadcast. Nightmare, being as popular as it was, spawned two foreign language spin-offs, the French The Chevalier de Labyrinth and the Spanish El Rescate del Talisman. Forgive my pronunciation. The formats differ slightly to Nightmare by having extra life features and single episode quest runtimes, but they're pretty cool, you should especially te check out Talisman, I find the final showdown quite amusing. But these weren't the only versions of Nightmare to be made for overseas. America was also interested in having their own version. So Broadsword created a pilot in 1992, 30 years ago, entitled Lords of the Game. Unfortunately for the kids in America, the US production chickened out when faced with the complexity of the chroma key technology, and it was never commissioned. Would I have wanted to see it commissioned? Well, it certainly would have drawn the US attention to Nightmare, and maybe cemented it as part of the geek canon rather than just a niche British thing. But other than that, it's just Nightmare without Hugo Meyer, it's practically a hollow shell. Another broadsword show that did make it a commission was The Sword of the Sorcerer. It was pitched to the BBC in 1995, 27 years ago, after Nightmare and Virtually Impossible were dropped by CITV due to the channel's top target audience dropping from 15 years down to 10. The details of the show were explained in the very last issue of The Quest, published in the summer of 1995, and by The Quest, I'm referring to the newsletter of the Nightmare Adventurers Club, the official Nightmare fan club, as opposed to the game show of the same name I reviewed in my last video. See, this is why you should avoid generic naming. Back on topic, The Sword of the Sorcerer is the story of a walled city-state upon a mountain which is left leaderless when the Emerald Blade, the weapon used to appoint its next king, is smashed and scattered all over the city. A wizard tries to reassemble the sword by finding all the pieces, but the kingdom is attacked by an evil technomancer using a huge mechanical castle which sounds like a Diana Wynne Jones ripoff but I'm not going to make any accusations here. Since the technology being used against them is completely unfamiliar to them, the wizard and his two child assistants need the help of people from a time of technology, and this is where the contestants come in. They, from computerised versions of their bedrooms at home, have to guide the assistants around the city collecting emeralds to reassemble the sword. It reminds me very strongly of Last Commanders, but in a fancy CGI setting rather than a sci-fi set. It also has a better reason for the contestants being involved in the first place than Last Commanders does. Unfortunately, none of it was realised as it wasn't commissioned for the same reasons it was created. Older kids weren't watching TV anymore. Which I think is a pathetic reason. Surely, if you find that older kids are no longer finding your content engaging, the correct response is to create content that they do find engaging, not cut out the demographic entirely. Like, I get cutting your losses, but that just seems stupid. Would I like to see it created? Uh, yes? Probably? It really is too close to Last Commanders for them to both exist, and Last Commanders might have filled up that niche entirely. But it also proves that a show like this is not only po possible, but can be done well, and the story sounds super cool, so yes! I would like to see a version of The Sword of the Sorcerer made today, in fact, I'd love to, but that wasn't the end of Tim Charles' game show dreams. Using an offshoot of Broadsword called Televirtual, a software engine was produced, allowing for the development of two new, fully VR shows, Nightmare VR and Timegate. Both shows involved a player who was given an avatar of themselves and used a VR helmet to see a first-person view of their surroundings and an advisor who remained live action and had a bird's eye view. Timegate, whose trailer dropped in 2002, 20 years ago, was supposed to be a game show aimed at adults and set in the hostile fantasy world of Underland, in which they quest for treasure, which would then become real prize money if they escaped alive and in time, setting up it apart from all other broadsword productions. But if the contestant was killed or failed to reach the exit Timegate before it closed, 
They would go home with nothing, and I presume the person who entered would never be seen again. However, the idea was shelved while working on Nightmare VR, whose pilot was produced in 2004, 18 years ago. As the name suggests, this is Nightmare, but in a fully VR format. Simple as that. Unsurprisingly, neither show was picked up. In my opinion, Nightmare VR was a mistake, and I don't just mean the god-awful theme tune. The virtual reality setting caused it to lose its way and its heart. No longer was it a kid from our world in a fantasy setting, it was just two kids playing a video game in two separate rooms. Where's the wonder in that? And it wasn't scary or atmospheric either. If anything, the most horrifying thing the pilot had to offer was the half-naked blue ogre and not for the reasons they wanted. Timegate sounds like an interesting idea, but I don't think technology is ready for it just yet. The environment itself looks okay-ish, but the characters and creatures are not good enough, and I extend the same sentiment to Nightmare VR. And I don't think now is a good time to make Timegate either. VR technology is being developed more every day, but we're not there yet, and we certainly weren't there then. Back to shows that were actually produced, except I kinda wish this one wasn't. The Satellite Game, 1990, 32 years ago. It's very, very dull. I don't think I've ever watched through a whole episode without skipping something. And maybe that means I'm missing hidden gems, but if there are any, they are very hidden or non-existent. The whole thing is mainly exposition with either Coco or Larry, the digital host and robotic avatar respectively, always blathering away to each other, themselves or the contestants, and the contestants always seem three seconds away from falling asleep. I'm always three seconds away from falling asleep. There's very little action, very little gameplay, and the character interactions feel almost painful. The locations visited feel vaguely discordant from the setting and genre as well. I don't like it, simple as that. The only remarkable thing about it is the technology that was used to create it, which was cutting edge for the time like all of Broadsword's shows. And that's probably their shared weakness. It was so cutting edge, they cut themselves with it. Would I bring it back? No. <laughs> I see a lot of it in its format in Last Commanders, and Last Commanders definitely has the better storyline of the two, and I feel it utilises the format much more effectively as well. I'd much rather have a third series of Last Commanders than a second series of the satellite game. Time Busters, 1993, 29 years ago. I'm not even going to try and hide it, I think this show is brilliant. I'm always a fan of time travel, and this is so good, I get this really strong vibes of the best parts of Interceptor, with all of the best of the improvisation and problem solving of Nightmare. It has three series, all very different, and all very good. You do need to suspend your disbelief a little, a lot, but they deal with the meta elements and other anachronisms in the show with a delicate touch. The episodes have interesting and intriguing plots, and it's just so skillfully done. Would I bring it back in a heartbeat? I think it's very cool. And with modern tech making the cameras and radios more compact and discreet, imagine how good it could be. I would definitely love to see it rebooted. So, there we have it. A spin into the Brawlsword television universe, a collection of shows that had the guts and doubtless got the glory with a couple of missteps here and there. Want to yell at me for having no taste or make a snide comment about kids these days? The comments are open. But, remember, it's only a game isn't it?